Steve, I must admit, when I looked down through and I saw that uh, you've added the Eurovision Song Contest to this, how many hours of drivel do you have to watch? Can I be honest, I like the Eurovision Song Contest. And I, wanna, I, will, I will put one thing on record. Um, every year I tell people I, I watch and bet on the Eurovision Song Contest. Oh, well, we've got no chance, nobody likes us. And it's not that we have no chance. If we sent the right artist singing the right song, we would do very well. There are six levels of Eurovision voting. The strong countries, Russia, Ukraine, Serbia, who all get votes off neighbouring countries. We're at the bottom end of that, but that doesn't mean we can't win. In fact, two years ago, 2000, Portugal won. Before they won in 2016, they, had never, they hadn't qualified for the final for 13 years. So it's, it's nonsense to suggest that uh, people don't like us. We just don't send the right records. It is a great, it's, it's a great contest. Uh, and I look on it is that things change because you, you, the songs are released in three formats. You get the, uh, as we do, the National Fidel, where Surrey sung best and we heard everyone sing. We get the uh, finals where the, the selected person is just released uh, and they've given, they, they perform the song. And then we get the ones where they just release a studio version. And this year, Australia was a studio version. And it's Je Jessica Morboy. Oh, and she was, the studio version, it sounded great. And she came tumbling down in the odds, 20 to 1, down to 12 to 1. 4 to 6 for the top 10. But then, some, you know, it, sound, it sounded great. And then some, some guy, I go on a forum, I talk to him, he, he writes a, a, a blog called Entertainment Odds, Rob Ferber, a great judge. He says, well, OK, that sounds great, but listen to this from two years ago when she sang live at Eurovision and she missed every note. So off we go... But, off we go to rehearsals, and she's still very strong in the betting. Her first rehearsal, they were laughing at her. And it all went very wrong for her. But still people who would tip her up at 14 to 1 were saying, well, that doesn't matter, that doesn't matter, she'll get it right on the night. She can sing better than that. And one of the, one of the key things about gambling is, or gambling profitably, is when you are wrong, you put your hand up and say, actually, when I tipped you Australia at 14 to 1, I was wrong bail very quickly and you know i mentioned rob ferber entertainment odds there's a guy esc tips gavster mm -hmm. he said australia is a banging tune it's great but then as soon as he heard the rehearsal they actually go across to listen to them when he heard the rehearsal he says forget this it ain't going anywhere near winning you asked you, you've pre um you've sort of beat me to one of my questions really is there a little select group of you guys that get together and sort of collude with your opinions for these reality TV programmes? Yes, uh, yes I, talk, I do talk to people. Uh, I talk to people in the industry. I'm quite... I, I speak to the uh, Hills compiler, Rob Dixon, a bit on Twitter. And I speak to a couple of lads who, who compile for Skybet on Twitter. But equally, outside of that, we have, I have a, a, a forum where I can swap ideas and put bets up and get honest opinions. If you go on some sites, uh, you'll get... And it, again, if someone opens up that uh, makes a comment, I was the first... I remember last year, I was first to highlight the chances of such and such winning. And that person is telling you, you need to listen to me because I'm a good tipster. But the fact that he's telling you to listen to him tells you that he hasn't got the... He, she hasn't got the confidence in their own ability to make you listen to them. So if, them, if someone says, I, you know, I've won everything for so many years, I've this and I'm that, I don't, I honestly pay no attention to them. If people of quality, they will find you. I well, get into the nitty gritty of this. You've told us now how that you've been successful. You've obviously got good connections, you do good research and you're a very sharp cookie in these markets. How on earth do you get on? For, someone once said to me, so I, I'm, I'm, not the, I'm not the cleverest person in the world. He said, but one thing you are, Steve, is resourceful. And yes, uh, 2002, I opened betting accounts. I had betting accounts with everyone. Uh, and 2003, 2004, a couple, uh, a couple of them said, contacted me. 
having been restricted, will you bet with us? Uh, and we'll let you bet. We will let you bet what you can. That's okay. Uh, so long as we know what you're betting, that's okay. And I had them with uh, bet three six five, bet Fred, uh, Hills and Skybet, and but over the duration of time, those accounts sort of filter away. People get sick of you, so you then move on. So the next uh, account after I had all mine, because I got I borrowed a friend's uh, identity. Came Shirley Starkey was my mother, and it it is quite embarrassing that uh, my mother is. I think she was seventy five at the time, and I had, I, had a, I did have a query with Paddy Power, and I thought, well, what do I do? Account name Shirley Starkey. I thought I can impersonate my mother. So, yes, uh, afternoon, whatever. Hello, darling. Uh, Shirley Starkey here, which is very much how my mother talks. Uh, and the guy on the other end of the phone says, yes, sir. But having gone to the lengths, I, I just persevered. And that's all you can do. Uh, and eventually, oh, oh, he, oh yes, madam. He <laughs> resolved my query. But it does show that uh, he, opening an account with a 75-year-old female's name is not a good idea but then from Shirley Stack you see people if people know what you do and you, you you're okay with them and you'll do them a favor they do a favor I went from uh, Shirley on to but these guys all these accounts are all long gone and you know thank god for it really uh, and I think I'm of the, of the generally with about within about two years I'm exhausted out but I do have people uh, who say right okay who will put money on for me so if I ring them text are you in town today yes visit Ladbrokes and put me this on and Amy is one of those people my other daughter goes around where she lives and will put me money on and I've got another lad who goes around and will put me money on so in, and I'm quite adept at, I'll just jump on the uh, uh, bus from York this zapper it cost me £10 to get to Leeds I can walk around Leeds in comfort and get on what, what I like really so although it's never easy to get on uh, and I can't just watch TV on a Saturday night and have this and that ultimately if you are resourceful enough you will find a way and if, you, if you're successful you are resourceful you mentioned earlier Betfair how come you don't have it all on there uh, I do have Betfair uh, I do use Betfair I'm a uh, premium charge payer um, but usually the markets the markets that I bet on the reality bets the market it generally isn't as well formed on Betfair for example I think after the first auditions for X Factor this year Grace Davis was on audition show one and Raxel were the very first act shown the fact is they went on to finish first and second so I was wanting to back uh, one firm went 20 to 1 Raxu and 10 to 1 Grace Davis so I spent the following day there was nothing available on that fair but I spent the following day getting on what I could around hills Ladbrokes and corals and you know I, you won't get massive amounts on but you will get sufficient on to give you a trading edge so I've noticed on your list which as I said a couple of times is varied you know no political bets now Surely if you're that good at guessing the British nation, you should be having it spark off better on politics. Yes, actually, actually I say, I didn't put politics down uh, because it, it's, it's, it's not a calendarised event, shall we say, but uh, political markets, as they come up, uh, I, I do bet on them. I bet on the last by-election, I think it was uh, the Lib Dems to finish second. The last actual bet I had was uh, a political bet. And it was, uh, will there be a Conservative leadership election this year? Up to the uh, 31st of December. And it was one to four, yes, three to one, no. And the, the Conservative Party, for there to be a leadership election, they have to get rid of Theresa May. Theresa May can that stand in a leadership election. There has to be a vote of no confidence. But for, to get to the vote of no confidence, you need 48 MPs saying, we have no confidence in Theresa. Ask the party, and then you need 
of the 320 Conservative MPs, you'll need 160 to say we haven't got confidence in Theresa. And that is a big number. So the, the three to one no Conservative leadership was a very, very it was, it was a strong bet. It's 10 to 11 this morning. And I would suggest that's still value. I don't think. Theresa May face a vote of no confidence, but all the Remain MPs and the soft Brexit MPs will vote for her. The fact that only 48 of her MPs actively want rid of her tells me that she's going to win a vote of 320. So you started your betting life, I assume, betting on horses, football, etc. Have you abandoned all of those solely for no, reality? No, no, no. I still... Cheltenham every year, I like a bet at Cheltenham. Uh, I, I, I do bet on horses as, as a lad. I remember back in Mrs. McCarty to win the thousand guineas, and as lads we were vote, as thirteen of we were, we were just we were only only horse racing, Bronze Hill for the Lincoln, Tatchipoo for the guineas, and it, we, I was relatively successful in those days. I remember, I remember at a young age back in Troy, uh, so I was maybe twenty two, I had fifty pound at seven to one Troy to win the Derby. It won by sort of. Uh, six lengths or so immediately uh, the next day my friend says oh this Tommy Carmode he's got the job for Michael Dickinson he'll ride he'll ride doubles trebles everywhere so Tommy Carmody, champion jockey uh, seven to one well put hundred pound on that he rode three winners the next day the following day fell and broke his leg which <laughs> but uh, again the, the, it wasn't the right bet 